National Podcast Day is September 30th, but what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to you. have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here with the Indie Mayhem Show episode 38 live. Well, I'm here, of course, in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, with me on the line is my compatriot, the announcer for Inspire Pro Wrestling, NWA. I have one of these weeks I'll actually put it in front of it because I'll remember in advance. <laughs> Normally it does go in the front. But, it it but, does. Uh, I think I, I, I let it slide because I like that, it. That's part of the charter or something, right? I, I don't know. I, I don't know how that goes with NWA anymore, so. <laughs> you know, it, it happens. I haven't seen the virals. Um, and of course, uh, myself, I'm doing some, actually, I'm hot off of some IWC action uh, here that we'll talk about in the second half, of course. Um, but uh, you can find us wherever at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this and all kinds of shows that we're doing. Uh, stuff about indie wrestling, stuff about uh, uh, the main WWE Impact Wrestling, as long as they're still around. Uh, and, and and there's a game show you should probably check out. Um, I can tell you, you can go to Wrestling Game show.com it doesn't go to much right now but what it does is pretty fantastic so take a listen to that mm-hmm. and let us know what you think about that um you can also drop us a line uh we're at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or drop the hotline let us know uh what you're digging in the indies like we got um so much from uh, uh pro wrestling gorilla a couple weeks ago uh 412 wms0 to drop a voicemail uh on twitter at mayhem show wrestling mayhem show on the google plus the facebook and the fantastic facebook group uh, where we have a lot of discussion going on and you can also find us audio and video versions on itunes youtube uh and stitcher and of course the great wrestling mayhem show super feed on itunes and stitcher as well in audio form just everything we do everything we do including this and all the other shows uh please comment please uh star us please you know whatever that is uh mechanism wherever you're finding us so uh, other people can find us as well and spread the word spread the love spread the love man um and you can join us here live every tuesday at 11 p.m eastern uh 10 p.m central for amen uh at live.sorgatronmedia.com join us in the chat room ask questions uh, join the conversation we are actually doing this a little bit early so if you are showing up the regular time uh sometimes we have to you have to jump around a little bit, uh, but we'll be there later to do the discussion uh, if you're joining us live. Um, but, uh, Eamon, we got a very special guest with us this week. And then, and we say very special a lot, but I think this is the probably the specialist of special guests we've had <laughs> in 38 episodes of the podcast. Um, I am very excited to have on a, a, a renaissance man of the independent wrestling world, uh, uh, mainly a referee, but definitely a referee extraordinaire, but he does various other stuff for a lot of top independents across the country and it's a pleasure to have him on the show ladies and gentlemen please welcome the one and only bryce remsburg bryce how are you doing this evening i'm i'm fantastic thanks for uh moving the schedule around to accommodate me and i don't know that i can live up to that uh introduction <laughs> but renaissance man i think that might uh shoot to the top of my headstone what it'll say a true a true renaissance man you realize bryce he was a true renaissance man <laughs> absolutely fake he refereed play fighting and sometimes talked about them. I think that's perfect. <laughs> awesome. Definitely. Uh, well, I guess we started off how we like to start off with a lot of our interviews, sort of an icebreaker question of sorts. And that trust is, falls, what did trust you... Trust falls? Are we doing trust falls? We, we may. I, I don't know how we can work that out through through, through Google Hangout. But if I'm if sure somebody can tell me how we can do a trust it. fall through Google Hangout, I will do one like every show. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, just, like That's like the personality <laughs> test. Get on that tech wizards! Come on, they have all these cool things. They have no. Uh, we got to. We got to figure that out. That'd be awesome. Pittsburgh to Philadelphia to Austin. Let's do it. Hey, we have a lot of tech Absolutely. incubators around here. Maybe we can pull that off. We we know some people. 
Yeah, <laughs> ask them while you're at it how I can referee and commentate the same match. I would love to pull that off as well. I am uh, technologically ignorant to that, but I would love to figure out a way where that happens. It's hard anyway, enough. Fine. It's hard enough when uh, the poor commentators that also have to MC uh, also have to announce the match the, the, the night. Oh. Uh, they get a lot of running happening. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Back to you with your questions, Dave. <laughs> no problem. I started. Off, I guess the best way to start it off though is, uh, what is your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Oh man. Uh, it involved the Ultimate Warrior for sure. It's probably around. I I guess uh, a neighbor friend of mine was watching it, and I I have memories of seeing uh, the 1990 SummerSlam. I'm probably older than you guys. I bet I'm a little bit older than you guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was negative three at that point. <laughs> okay, yes, that that is true. Then I was seven. Uh, so uh, I remember seeing that a little bit of that, and then I really kicked in around like the 1991 Survivor Series. I remember begging my dad to go. Nice to see this house show at the Hershey Park Arena in Hershey, Pennsylvania uh, around Christmas time. And the main event was Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair. So it was all pretty much downhill from there, uh, more or less. That was my first house show. Not to mention a real barn burner, Virgil versus Skinner, of course. Tore oh, the wow. house Don't get me started on Virgil. <laughs> the roof off the Hershey Park Arena. <laughs> uh, and, you know, then it was magazines and pay-per-views and T-shirts and foam fingers and then I had another big renaissance as a teenager when I actually like was able to have some of my own money and I was able to drive and um, King of the Rings and Summer Slams and eventually WrestleMania came to Philly and I spent a lot of money to go there. I spent a lot of money on wrestling altogether. Um, and then I guess kind of the third boom was when I discovered independent wrestling mm. in probably 99, 98, 99. And these two dudes were the coolest dudes in the world. They were called... Uh, they were named Reckless Youth and Mike Quackenbush. And they were little guys. And uh, uh, they were, like, doing all these cool things you didn't see done on WWF or WCW or even ECW. Yeah. Um, and I just thought they were so cool and uh, lo kind of followed their careers. Uh, and uh, lo and behold, the two of them got together and opened a wrestling school in 2002. Uh, so what would come to be known as Chikara. And I was their... Uh, I went to an open house two months after it opened. I ring announced the first show, and I've uh, not looked back uh, since. That was over 12 years ago. Wow. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, so going to uh, your start in wrestling uh, with the Wrestle Factory, uh, did you have an idea, sort of, w was your plan to go in to become a wrestler? Did you want to be a referee, uh, sort of, in the onset? Uh, what, what was sort of your thought process uh, going into it? I think I initially wanted to be, like, maybe in the back of my mind, Pipe Dream wanted to be a wrestler, mm -hmm. and then I realized what it encapsulated, and I uh, put all of my athletic ability in one hand, like this little, tiny little pile, like a couple grains of salt of how athletic <laughs> I was. I was like, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, and I was just, I didn't want to be, I don't know. I was like... ECW had kind of like, the, the, the glory of ECW was wearing off there. I was like, oh man, like... These guys are kind of like derelicts. Some of them are derelicts, and a lot of them are like hurt all the time, and they can't yeah. remember their kids' names and stuff. And I think that really scared me. Uh, also, it was half as cheap uh, to go train to be a referee at Chikara. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, let's do this. Uh, as it turned out, they didn't, you know, I was the first referee to go through the program. They didn't really know, um, they didn't really probably know what was going on at all yet in hindsight. Uh, so they let me do all the wrestler drills. So I kind of, mm -hmm. I, I, trained to be a wrestler i just haven't i don't use those uh, skills very often i, I kind of i appreciate more the the uh the mental game and the emotional game of wrestling more than the physical game i i, I respect the physical game but i can't bring it into that and, you know it started as a referee and then maybe four or five years later i started commentating and then a couple years after that i started getting involved backstage a little bit of booking a little bit of um organization stuff I do all the travel stuff for chikara like i uh realized that I could probably make a resume look a lot better mm. with uh, the business end of wrestling as opposed to the physical end of wrestling. Uh, I still get to perform. I still get to go all these places. I still get to meet all these people. I still get to watch all these awesome matches inside the ring. Uh, but hopefully a couple fewer concussions and a prolonged career. Like, I, you know, if I wanted, I feel like I could probably do this into my 40s and 50s if I wanted to. So. I think that's where my head was at. I was uh, a little too smart for my own britches. Awesome, Beth. Um, and, you know, talk, in, I 
looking at you sort of your very early career, I know you, I mean, I mentioned before, like you've worked for a lot of the major wrestling promotions across the country. You know, it's not just your car. You work for, you know, you do stuff for Shimmer now. You do stuff for, you did stuff for IW Mid-South uh, back during their heyday and, and just various other stuff. How did you get about sort of going to all these different places and sort of, you know, because we mentioned, you know, wrestlers getting out there and traveling and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, I'm, I'm assuming for referees, it's, you know, you know, just as much. Yeah, I, uh, I, one of the, you know, in a couple years into Chikara, Chris Hero came along and started training us as well, and he was traveling a lot, and uh, he was always a guy that appreciated a good road trip, like, there wasn't, he wasn't quite, like, blowing up yet, Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, he wasn't getting flown a lot of places, so he was always cool about filling a car with, you know, his students, so it'd be, you know, when Claudio first moved, when Sweeney was first coming up, or when Kingston was getting out of about, we would all jump in a car together, just go to shows, and you know, sometimes it'd be my car, sometimes I would do the travel arrangements, but I just started jumping in the car with these guys and going along, and luckily I got on a lot of these shows and made a good impression and got invited back, and that's how I got to IWC in Pittsburgh, and that's how I got to Cleveland mm-hmm. All Pro in Cleveland and um, IWA Mid South and czw was local and uh, got dabbled in ring of honor a little bit dabbled in pwg a little bit um just you know i was fortunate to make good contacts and make good impressions and uh you know i was pester i was pesky i guess too i don't know definitely but um yeah and you mentioned you know sort of your especially with shikari now you very assume a lot of different roles for them now uh how did that come about like I know because uh, you recently did an interview on Cole Cabana's Auto Wrestling where you sort of talk about what how Cabana. Yeah. Cabana. I, I, okay. Yeah. I'm saying right. he, 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 he's got a little bit of success. He, yeah. he knows. Um, but uh, you mentioned about how sort of in this, I don't know if, if burnout's the proper word, but you know, you sort of mentioned how there's only like so much you could have learned as a referee, so you started to extend yourself a bit more. Um, uh, how. How was that like, you know, sort of, you know, what encouraged you maybe to become a commentator and, and, and a backstage role and sort of do this other stuff? And how, um, and how was it like? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that I, I, I didn't, you never stop learning. Uh, but, if, you know, it's easy to get complacent doing something. Uh, mm-hmm. I always want to kind of do a little bit more. So when I'd be refereeing, I'd come to a show and, you know, everyone's like, you know, getting ready for their match and stuff. And I'm just kind of waiting for the show to start. And I realize, well, like, I could be doing something right now. So maybe I started like helping out with promos or maybe I started, you know, helping out with the the front of the house a little bit and, 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 you know, ticket sales and just every, there's so many nuances to running a wrestling company, which in in essence is running a small business. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a lot of the more successful independent wrestling companies, you know, there's at least one full-time employee. A Chikar only has one a full-time employee, but you know, that's impressive that that's a job. And I, you know, there's so much to learn about that. And being a homegrown guy, being a guy, you know, like I think the powers that be at Jakar trusted me and, you know, I've been there as long as anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, So like all these guys have come in and, you know, I've kind of watched Jakar develop and watched Jakar grow. And I've learned a lot about, you know, like I can, I know when we're having a good show, I can feel it. I I know it because I've been to probably 200 Jakar shows. Um, it wasn't so much a lack of, of learning, just, just like, a, I guess, like a thirst for more. That sounds really cheesy. Uh, <laughs> I don't but know. no, I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I, well, I've been doing this for a while, and I, I, I feel like I have a handle on this. Well, what more can I do? And then it became, you know, now I'm, you know, soliciting sponsorships during, you know, the weeks between Chikara shows and, and trying to get newspapers and stuff to cover us and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot goes into it, and it's interesting to me. It's fascinating. I have a I have a broadcast telecommunications uh, degree from college that I don't use too too often in my day job, but this is probably you know my best use of it. Hosting the event center, as dumb as that sounds, like that's what I went to college for. So mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I like doing, it, and I've always loved wrestling. So a neat little package. Awesome. Uh, going just slightly back to refereeing. Uh, I mean, you've you know refereed many independent wrestling matches, you know, over the years in, in many different companies. Uh, it, it, you maybe not maybe you don't have to name one, but if you can think of sort of the one that means the most to you that you've gotten the chance to be in the ring for and ref or or any any match that sort of sticks out to you in that degree. Um, maybe not the like craziest best match in the world, but as far mm-hmm. as from what it meant. Um, 
the main event of ch- the first Chikara pay-per-view, which was uh, Quack versus Kingston, was like to crown our first grand champion. We had held off having a major singles title for 10 years, which is crazy. Uh, and, you know, we had this tournament all season, and we were crowning a champion, and we were on pay-per-view for the first time. And it was really like <clears throat> this little dumb hobby that we all had, like, means something. It succeeded. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, fans crying, wrestlers crying, just like um, – it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's the, it was the exclamation point on a monumental day. Um, the, at that time, a lot of, a lot of iPay-per-views were having problems, you know, technical tech problems. Mm. Ours went off without a hitch. Uh, our, the, the arena was packed. Um, we had uh, more pay-per-view buys than we thought we were going to have. Like just everything was on. The show was going great. And that, that was just, that was just the end of a wonderful day that I'll never forget. Uh, so for sure, just I have a I, I remember being in the ring before that match, holding the belt and just taking like I'm gonna take a little like a mental screenshot of this because I'm gonna want to have this forever. It's pretty cool, just uh, that that feeling of well, like is the tree just falling in the woods? But like when you do an eye pay per view, like fans are tweeting at you while it's happening, like you're saying right. things in commentary and you're getting responses immediately. Like mm-hmm. it's a really powerful thing. Uh, and especially for a little engine that could like Chikara to grow to that giant train, like it was pretty cool. It was a very, very cool day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eamon, if I can ask here. Uh, so okay. speaking of that and you guys growing over, over, especially this monumental, I, I feel from this perspective, growth of Chikara. Um, I know you guys have been involved with groups like Ring of Honor. I see partnerships like what's going to happen with Inspire. Um, I think you came to uh, Cleveland via a- AIW. Uh, how how important are those partnerships, and especially something as big as uh, Ring of Honor, uh, in that growth over the last few years? I mean, I don't know uh, what people's conception of indie wrestling is, uh, but no one's a millionaire. Uh, no one is just blowing their nose with $20 bills and like Scrooge McDuck laughing at everyone. There's not a lot of money to go around and there's not a lot of fans to go around the independent wrestling. If you look at the, um, Oh, my battery's dying, uh, on this thing. Uh, if you look at the grand scope of wrestling fans in the world, uh, the independent wrestling fan probably makes up for less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's not a lot to go around. So when we work together, when we, you know, when an AIW fan becomes a Chikara fan, when a Chikara fan becomes an AIW fan, or even more so, Ring of Honor is probably, I would estimate Ring of Honor is probably three or four times bigger than Chikara is. Yeah. Uh, if not more. Uh, so if we can take a 20% of their fan base and make turn them to Chikara fans, like, win-win. Like, that mm-hmm. was at a time where Ring of Honor was going through some troubles and they were looking to try anything. And, like, we, I, we had more to gain than lose from mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with Inspire Pro. Like Inspire Pro is a uh, a young upstart promotion that Chikara once was, and once upon a time, someone did what they could to help out Chikara. And if Chikara can do a little bit and you know have a couple guys come down and have a good time and hopefully have good matches and hopefully pack the 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 building, like cool, everybody wins. Um, whatever you think of like as uh, that expression about the sum of all the parts, like that is so, so, so true in independent mm-hmm. wrestling. Mm-hmm. If, if, if one guy in one match realizes that his match is not the most important thing on the show, it's part of the show. Um, you know, one guy in one match, having a good match with another person becomes that match becoming part of an entire show becomes that turns into that show becoming a good DVD turn, that turns into that promotion, having a good year. Like it just grows exponentially and, and Every way you look at growth, you see working together and positivity and like manners, as dumb as that sounds. Like, there's Mm -hmm. so much shady stuff in wrestling that doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Like, um, after 12 years, like, I want to do things that help things. I want to do things that are fun. Like, this Sunday, I'm driving to Ohio to shave a funny thing in my mustache and do this thing called old wrestling. And it's <laughs> going to be fun. I know it's going to be fun because fun people are involved that I respect and like. Like, it's not about selling out Madison Square Garden for us. It's about, you know, getting out what you put in. And, like, like you know, it is not my immediate goal to be refereeing on Monday Night Raw. Uh, mm-hmm. It's my immediate goal to feel that I'm getting back what I'm putting out. And mm-hmm. a weekend like King of Trios weekend, I do. And a weekend like, you know, meeting Chikara fans in Austin, Texas and helping out Inspire Pro. Like, yeah, that's that's something that I'm, you know, like that's rewarding to me. Uh, 
so that's that's kind of where I'm at, I guess, after so, all this time. Basically, working together and not working apart because that that does not make work. And, and, I think, and I think the greatest thing, especially with those far- partnerships that we spoke of, and, and like you know the variety, you know, it, it's no <laughs> long. It's <laughs> my wife's home, um, She really hates AIW. She hates AIW. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not so. It hates Cleveland. Um, but uh, but uh, but you know, but the you know, it's not just uh, uh, a lot of them are, but not just a lot of promotions trying to relive the Attitude Era, trying to be what we're seeing on TV. You have your Chikaras, you have your old wrestling. It seems to be there's a lot of variety out there, and uh, and that's why I like the partnerships because it is like they're not direct competitors in style, right? Sure, sure. There's there's something for everyone out there. Like it's. What are you hungry for tonight? You want to go get Mexican food? You want to go get the Chinese buffet? Like, you, whatever, go go get what you want. Like, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's out there. It's just up to us to find people that will enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people that like comic books like Chikara. People that have kids like Chikara. Like that, we need to go to those people and find them. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I've always astonished. I, I got to when you were doing the Zach Allen documentary uh, a year ago. Uh, I got to see a circus based uh i can't remember the name off the top of my head but it was like it was like a sideshow circus theme to everything right every all the wrestlers were re-themed as that i think the uh, uh, fury and portal were part of it as well um, detroit? what's that was this in detroit in detroit yeah yeah i've heard of this i can't remember what it's called but i know what you're talking but about. i was you know talking with it and with them and they're like yeah the, the the people that come to these shows are not wrestling fans even like no. they're like these are like hipsters and stuff, you know. These are like yeah, more art no. scene people, and and they're coming yeah. to this wrestling show under this veil. Yes, uh, Chikara in the last two or three years, and exceptionally in the this our since our rebirth has made an effort to position ourselves. I mean, we're never going to take wrestling out of the name; it's a wrestling show. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's not necessarily about who's in the main event. It's not this guy versus this guy. It's Chikara's coming to town. King of Trios is going to happen. Uh, you know, and it's a purposeful move towards the the business plan of the Harlem Globetrotters or the mm-hmm. Monster Truck Jams or the Cirque du Soleil. Like you put Chikara on the marquee. Oh man, I know what this is. This is going to be fun. Um, obviously, to get your foot in the door, you got to say pro wrestling. But and we don't want to shortchange our long term fans. Of course, there's intricate stories, but and of course there's going to be like the action people come to expect. But we definitely make a pact to never we never phone it in. Like every show, you get. Do all of our best to have the full Chikara experience. And uh, yeah, definitely branding away from this guy versus this guy to like, oh, wow, we're, we're, we're serving a whole dinner. We're not serving one course. You know what I mean? Like we're not, we're, not having, we're not having our friends over just for dessert. We're having our friends over to give them the whole Chikara experience. Like the, the, the music that plays before the show, um, Gavin Loudspeaker is a huge, huge, huge part of this. Uh, he, the master of ceremonies, you know what we do after the show, what we do at intermission, like it's, it's, it's one giant package that we pride ourselves in offering uh, the Chikara experience. Again, that sounds cheesy, but it's what we call it. Definitely. Awesome. And speaking of the experience, I mean, uh, we mentioned we just come off of a uh, King of Trios weekend this past weekend. And, uh, another, obviously sort of a big sort of, oh, a lot of people consider it like a holiday event for not just Chikara, but for independent wrestling. Uh, I actually just got finished watching all three nights through oh. smart mark video and, and, it seems like a massive success. A lot of a lot of really good stuff from there. Uh, how does it feel, you know, coming off of coming off of that weekend? It feels amazing. It's 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 it is Christmas. Is several people described it like Christmas, and it really is. It's uh, all my favorite people in the locker room in the same place at one time, and like all of my favorite fans. You know, you know, Brandon Stroud came from Texas, and Danielle came from Canada, and all of our local fans that we always see there. Like it's it really just it really just is pretty much all your favorite people in one room at the same time. And it's, and I feel guilty on these weekends because I don't get to catch up with people and talk to people. I can go out with people. Like it's just, it's just go, go, go. And there's so much to do. And that's part of it. But like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's overwhelming and it's, 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 it's amazing. The response that we get, uh, you know, the, there were some doubters about the lineup this year and it wasn't what it once, you know, maybe was in name power, but we were confident we could deliver in action and in story and an experience, like I said. And uh, I believe that we did do that. Uh, so, yeah, but yeah, and no, it's, I would, it's, I would, it's, it's I would, euphoric. When you're, when you're driving home on the third night, it's just like, like man. And, and, and like we talked about it before the show as a locker room. Like, Chikara's not about I, Chikara's about us, and that's always been true. And like, 
that's how this happens is us and we and team and like it's cheesy mm-hmm. stuff but it's totally true no one as great of a wrestler as eddie kingston is no one would go out there and watch him you know flop around the ring for three hours no no one would go watch ultraman do poetry yeah someone might watch ultraman three poetry <laughs> for three hours. uh if you've heard his if you've heard his album you know what i'm talking about it's uh, yeah. it's, it's taxing on the ears uh for some <laughs> uh, uh it's not my cup of tea but good for him uh uh, you know, but it, it, it's it's about we and it's about us and 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 we lost Claudia, we lost Brody, we lost Sarah, and and we moved on and we moved on and we're still here and we're bigger than ever. Like, it's 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 you know, teams win battles, dudes don't win battles. Definitely, and then I would attest to that for anyone you know looking to check it out. There's a lot of really great action on that on on all three nights, and I would think that like going to like the whole storytelling stuff, I would think since. Uh, the closest I would think would probably be the 2010 King of Trios, where the BDK eventually won. This was one of the rare cases where it's a lot. There's a good amount of story stuff. Uh, obviously, the biggest thing being the feud between Shakar and the Flood. Um, but you know, it, a lot of it translated through that show. And I think it's one of those things that makes Shakara unique is their attention to storytelling. And and you know, and because sometimes you know, I mean, not to not cut promotions, but sometimes you know, there's a more focus on in ring as opposed to story. And, sure. and and I think Jakarta does has a good mix of both, and and it's, makes makes a point to tell good stories. It's tough. It's tough. Sometimes it's a really story heavy day, and sometimes it's a really non story heavy day. It's mm. there, there's a perfect balance of story and 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 action. And King of Trios is kind of the pinnacle of that because there's a lot of fans that we only see at King of Trios. You know, we mm. see them once a year, and we know that we have to have both those hats on tight. Uh, for that weekend. So yes, this really was, especially this, the story, like this, there's going to be a lot of eyes on King of Trees. King of Trees is the hottest selling DVD of the year. It's not available on Mm -hmm. iPay-Per-View. Our, our, you know, we do an iPay-Per-View in the summer, we do an iPay-Per-View at the beginning of the summer and one at the beginning of the winter. Uh, And those are, you know, that's, that's, but King of Trios is is the biggest selling DVD of the year. So we know that both those hats have to be on tight. You you don't want to, you don't want to anger the casual fan. You don't want to anger the, the deep intrinsic intrinsic story fan so yeah it's, it's a tough balance but i maybe maybe more than any other year i feel like we nailed this year definitely absolutely i would wholeheartedly agree um i also want to bring up that i uh, i know that you've been promoting it uh, on you on your personal social medias and that you you have taken up a bit of a special project you know since the fact that you are such a long-standing referee uh for you know upcoming you know uh up-and-coming referees around the independent wrestling scene uh, a bit of a referee project i i, I don't remember the official name uh, yeah, I, t- it, it, it should have one but it doesn't uh, <laughs> you know uh, uh some younger referees contact me they send me a match of theirs i watch it we talk much like this either on the phone or via uh, skype if they're international uh and we just kind of break it down about like you know you know here's what i thought uh, they ask me questions. I ask them questions about how how long they've been working, you know. And we just usually have about a half hour, largely very pleasant discussion. Um, and then if they want, uh, you know, in a couple months they they can send me another match, and we can go over like what we you know we talked about before, improving, da 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really fun, and it, and and much like, um, you know, as a promotion, as a whatever, it's paying it forward in a way. It's it's spreading what knowledge I may have acquired uh, with others. And I've, I've done like maybe six or eight or nine or something. And uh, I probably get as much out of it as they do. It's really fun. and It's uh, rewarding for everyone. So made some new friends too. Definitely. And then we've, we've, uh, we've actually had a uh, Jay Clemens, a uh, referee from Cleveland on okay. the show. And we, I mean, Sorg's, Sorg's done the stuff with refereeing 101. Um, and I think we've talked about it before, but the idea that, you know, people don't really, appreciate the importance of a referee and of, more specifically of a good referee uh i you know i think you mentioned before how you know sort of the idea that you know a good referee blends in but like a bad one can you know really stick out oh yeah, yeah for sure i'm afraid my little tablet guy is gonna die here just want to let you know i might have to call in after this I don't know, I don't that's know. perfectly fine we, we can do some we can do some editing magic <laughs> if, okay, if okay 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 <laughs> or i can maybe switch to the laptop because my wife is i'll figure something out sorry sorry guys uh, Either way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yes, a good a good referee is 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 along for the ride. A, a good referee makes a good match better. Um, a good referee makes a bad match better, hopefully, or at least you know. Um, I mean, I'm 
I just kind of flow with the action. If it's a if it's a serious Ring of Honor match, maybe I won't be goofing around so much. If it's you know the finals of King of Trios, maybe that's business time. But if it's like you know the Submission Squad versus the Gentlemen's Club, <laughs> then maybe, maybe we gotta have a little fun. Maybe we gotta goof off a little bit. Like you roll with the punches. You 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 flow where where the flow goes. Uh, mm. You know. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I've been lucky to referee death matches for CZW and referee lucha matches and referee for the Japanese guys that come over for Chikara, mm-hmm. uh, and referee in, in front of 10 people and referee in front of 2000 people, you know, like I've, uh, and referee for big fed names and referee for guys who it's their first match. Like after 12 years, I pretty much feel like I've checked just about all the boxes. Uh, there's probably a couple more that I would love to check off that, which being refereeing in all 50 States, which I'm working on. Uh, but, but, I feel like I have a decent pedigree of experience, and if I can use that to, you know, uh, spread the spread the love a little bit, I'm all for it. Absolutely, and if anyone, any any prospective referees out there listening, definitely sure. take them up because I mean, uh, especially I mean, I mean, definitely on an independent level, you know, Bryce is the guy I would say we got to go to. Um, so we also mentioned, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least um, I. We also mentioned, uh, and the stuff that uh, obviously involves me directly, but uh, you, we mentioned Inspire Pro Wrestling. I know uh, Chikara and Inspire are doing uh, a bit of a collaborative thing uh, in a couple of weeks uh, for the big Battle Wars event. Uh, you and, and some of the fellow the Chikara performers are going to be coming down uh, for that event uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, I know I'm excited, but I, I just... I'm pumped, man. I'm, I'm excited to be included. Like, uh, you know... Referees don't get to travel much in the current independent wrestling uh, economy, uh, and the fact that I get to be a part of this, I'm really, really excited. I, uh, you know, we all kind of work together to make this happen, and it's happening, and it's less than two weeks away, and it's going to be <laughs> rad. I'm really, really excited. I, I hear nothing but good things from Brandon and 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 Biss, and I think it's I think it's going to be awesome. I, I want to turn people away. Like I think that. These, this is a marriage made in heaven, and uh, I, I know they're Chikara fans in Texas. Like, mm-hmm. everybody come on out. Like, I think I think it's going to be a fun night for everybody. Uh, it's going to be a party. And then, um, you know, come what may afterwards, Sixth Street, Lone Stars, who's to say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, at least I can not only shake my head now, now that I've turned 21. So. Yeah, all right. Well, welcome <laughs> to the party. <laughs> Normally, I'd just be sitting in the back on Sixth Street. But, uh, oh, we, no, we, we, were, we worry about him up here, uh, up here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Uh, a yeah, little bit. No, he's, he's, he's a little man now. We'll take good care of him. We'll, well take good care of we're, him. We're concerned because we've been influencing him for uh, uh, since he was like 16 on this show. Uh, yes. And I, I'm afraid he's going to put some of that to use. <laughs> oh, boy. Just a boy. I just... But anyhow, uh, myself, Dasher Hatfield, uh, Icarus, Fire Ant, and Silver Ant are all coming to Austin uh, on Sunday, October 5th. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. I, I Austin's one of my favorite cities in the world. If, if I could pick one city that I could bring a Chikara show to, it would be Austin. Uh, it's you know, quite a financial undertaking to bring everyone <laughs> to Austin, but we'll bring this little, we'll bring a little slice of Chikara pie uh, to Austin on October 5th. And I, I think it's going to be a party. It's going to be fun. Definitely. A little, a little taste example. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe the, that'll whet your appetite. We can bring a whole party down someday. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I guess the, the last question we'll ask, and it's sort of the question, the common question we ask everyone, sort of a discussion question, since we are a podcast about independent wrestling and many people who we've asked, uh, tend to take this in various different directions, so feel free to take it however which way you wish. Okay. But the uh, last question we have is, what is the best and worst thing about independent wrestling? Ooh. The best is the uh, friendships and the relationships. It's kind of weird. Mm. But, uh, um, if, if I hated everyone in Chikara, I would have quit 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, luckily, I love most of the guys in Chikara. Uh, some of the new guys I'm not so sure about. It takes a little while to go. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, by and large, newer, you know, those newer like, ants seem a little bit blue. Yeah, I'm a suspect. The one, the one with the, the, the yeah, missile assault. The guy that says his name, I'm not so sure about him. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, when college was going on, I was going to indie wrestling shows. So, hmm. so sounds corny, but Icarus and Hollow Wicked and Eddie Kingston and, and Jigsaw and uh, Ultra Mantis are my college buddies. These are the guys that I've known for 12 years and that I – you know, know their wives and I know their families and, you know, like we've been through a lot together. Uh, a lot of it's at wrestling shows, but nonetheless, we've been through a lot together. And, and you know, a lot of them were at my wedding. Uh, um, if, if, if I, you know, uh, the greatest show in the world, I, I, I would rather, this is going to sound crazy. I'd rather be at a show with all my friends and tons of people that I like uh, in front of 50 fans making 
two dollars than maybe in front of uh, you know three thousand fans and a bunch of people that I can't stand to be around. And I'm making a lot of <laughs> like I'm over that. Wrestling does not pay my bills. It helps. It helps with you know my hobbies. It helps me maybe like go out to dinner to a nice place and travel and do things. But like wrestling's not paying the mortgage on this house right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you you. I get that. Like, I get that it's about the relationships. It's about the friendships. It's about the good times. It's about going to the bar afterwards and singing karaoke and goofing off and telling stories about it the next day. Like, that's something we all go through together. And uh, that's something I value the most. Uh, the worst is, and I touched on this earlier, the, the you know, sabotaging other promotions and the, you work here so you can't work here. And, mm-hmm. like, I don't want to lose tonight. Like, that's sort of, like, drama and politics about any wrestling, like, man, aren't we, like, is it? Is this really worth it? Is this really how we want to be spending our time and energy? Like like I said, the independent wrestling landscape takes up, like, 0.001 of the worldwide pro wrestling revenue. And, like, we're going to waste these moments and these times and this energy on this negativity. Like, mm-hmm. it's exhausting. And I'd say 99 times out of 100, it goes nowhere. So that's probably my least favorite part. Definitely. Absolutely. So so thank you very much, Bryce, for joining us. This was a my pleasure. Pleasure. Fantastic time. Uh, if I you hope, have, I hope you'll save me a commentary seat uh, next weekend. Oh, it would be my honor, sir. You, it you, be my, it be my even know. that that seat is more than open. Um, so, uh, if you have any uh, places where people can find you on social media that you would like to plug, or any upcoming events that you'll be on, uh, feel free to uh, plug away. I I love interacting with people on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Facebook's my my uh, real name, and then Twitter's at Dub Bryce is right. Uh, and yeah, I got a, got a fun little schedule coming up here. Going to be in Ohio for old wrestling this weekend. Going to be in Austin next weekend. And then after that comes Shimmer. And then after that, Chikara is heading down to North Carolina and Virginia. North Carolina is one of my favorite stops on the Chikara calendar. So it's going to be a fun little, business always picks up in the spring and the autumn. So it's going to be a fun autumn. Um, if you're anywhere near where Chikara show goes, I say this to everyone, um, we have a lot of great Chikara fans worldwide, but the greatest way to experience Chikara is live and in person. If you're within any radius of a Chikara event, this includes Inspire Pro in Austin. Uh, uh, come, come see us. Come, you know, bring your friends, bring your kids. Like, I, I can't say enough about the Chikara experience. DVDs are great. iPay-per-views are great. But the live experience is, is where we're at our finest. Awesome. Definitely. So definitely... Go check them out, and you can check out Chikara. If you do have the ability to just get the DVD, you can go to Smart Mark Video and, and all that all that good stuff. So thank well, you very much, Bryce, Thank for you for us. your time, guys. It's my, my pleasure to be here, my pleasure to talk wrestling with you guys, and I look forward to seeing you both in person someday, you you sooner uh, in, uh, in Austin. Uh, maybe not. Maybe no Pittsburgh dates on the books, but I'm sure eventually I'll get back there. One day. One day, man. One day. I'll even <laughs> take a Cleveland. Keep the Primanti brothers on ice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, we had a, a pretty exciting weekend, uh, IWC International Wrestling Cartel, that Bryce used to be involved with back in the day. Um, had a pretty cool event, IWC Saturday Night Fights. Um, this uh, this was a little interesting. I, I think they figured out a formula here at IWC, because they, they do these, <laughs> these smaller shows at White Oak to the point where they only let me do one camera. Um, it, it's like, that is the smallness of the show, apparently. Um, so, and to, to that effect, uh, you can get the digital download for like six bucks. Cause I'm like, it's one camera. I'm not going to do a full price for it. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and you can get matches, stuff like that. Uh, but there's a lot of debuts. Like we usually have the proving grounds there over the summer in July, but yeah. there was again, a lot of debuts. They had their faces a change, which was really like kind of an NXT beat or Nexus beatdown kind of segment they did last month at uh, Cage Fury. They officially debuted and, and had a promo and everything. And they're all like first match out of training school, basically, mm-hmm. right? All three of them. Um, unfortunately, all of their family came and they were the hottest group all night. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not supposed to be the good guys at all. Uh, Andrew Palace's section is getting bigger every month. Awesome. I'm, awesome. Pretty, I'm pretty there's like 20 people and i'm pretty sure most of them are his friends and family um and uh somebody else oh there was another guy let's see if i can pull that up real quick um baron i, uh, I talked to him before the show too it's gonna bug me but fourth match that he's had mm-hmm. uh he had a match with matthew justice um from and he's from um um from uh, uh lance storm's training school oh okay Four matches in, and this guy's like freaking amazing. Um, <laughs> Brian Bowers is the name if you want to look him up. 
Um, I think he is on Facebook just under, I think that's just his real name. Uh, from when I was, I was talking with him, um, uh, a killer six man tag match. Another one like Dra- Javico, Dravico, Knight Riders um, against Lee Ryan's and uh, incredibly amazing Alex Daniels and Joshua Singh. Oh, amazing! I get you. Um, and those two, those two are apparently from the AIW Wrestling Academy. And I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I actually didn't know they were from the Academy. I know they recently started competing on their shows. Okay, uh, but, but yeah, that's awesome. So I think they're fairly new too, um, but they had a six man tag, and 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 uh, the other four are also from IWC's wrestling school um, for being fairly new and a fairly green team, all top to bottom. They put together just one of those crazy everything's all over to play six man tags. It was really enjoyable. It was really fun. The crowd was really into it. Those guys did really good. Um, you know, as far as your faces have changed, guys, I think there are varying degrees of their newness. You know, you can kind of tell it's their first match, but I think there's a lot of potential in those guys. Um, the one guy is killer on the mic. He's got this like, 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 he's got this like smart, this, this, uh, uh, hey ladies personality, you know, um, as perfect. Uh, something I guess did really good, uh, in the ring too. Uh, but one of the biggest surprises, of course, was, uh, Andrew Palace, who had a match beginning of the night with Corey, F- no, no, I'm sorry, uh, uh Chess Flex were a friend of the show, got inserted in the main event. Uh, with Facade and Sandy Guevara uh, for the number one contender for the Super Indie um, and and won. So he's taking on RJ City next month uh, nice. for the Super Indie title. Um, but he's an, I mean, he's another Academy guy that's been through it. Like this guy has been, he's taken on Matt Striker. He's had a match with, uh, Zima Zion, uh, Zima Ion. I, he's had so many freaking names. I'm sorry. DJ Z, DJ, DJ Z, who also was there, uh, by the way. Um, but he tends to pop up at the IWC shows. It is kind of his home promotion. Um, even though he doesn't live in Pittsburgh anymore. <laughs> um, but good to see him as always. He, he landed to the, some commentary. Uh, during the main event, but all together, like it's one of those, uh, I had a discussion with somebody about, you know, uh, that going into the, the, these shows, there's not much storyline. Right. Um, but like case Fury was a great show. This was a great show. The talent is stepping up and making these great shows, despite mm-hmm. whatever the story is going into these. Right. Um, so I, I, I think that's really impressive, you know, which also lends to the idea. Um, and maybe this is something touched on briefly here in the interview earlier today. And it is a question I want to pose to you. How, how do you, how important do you think storyline is in the Indies? In the Indies, uh, um, I want to say incredibly important. Uh, I personally feel it's very important. Um, uh, but I, I kind of did bring it up in the interview, the idea that there are a lot of indie companies, really successful indie companies, that do um, a lot of their stuff based on not not with story not being the focus, with the with the point of these two people put on a good wrestling match, so we put them in a wrestling match. Um, I mean, and then there's there's always got to be some story. I mean, I, I'll throw an example. PWG is you know, probably one of the most successful indies right now. Um, they kind of usually revolve with one major story, usually involving the heavyweight title. Um, but other than that, it's very much just like, these would be cool matches, let's put them on the show. Um, and that's perfectly fine, and, and it's directed more to a certain audience. Um, but I think stories are immensely important. I think, you know, there's should be... There's one thing to be excited for a wrestling match because you, you're excited to see the actual wrestling match, see what they're going to do in the ring. But there's also, a, I think, a matter of investment. Of, of you, know, you invested in a character, in their story, in their pro- in, the, in a company's product. Um, you know, and I think that's, that's sort of the difference. Um, and, and sometimes it works for some companies and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I, but personally, for me at least, I find story immensely important. So when those companies come along that do utilize story, um, it, 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 they stick out more in my mind, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, they're more lasting. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I look, I look at, uh, uh, you know, some of these and I realize there's people that just kind of drop into these shows. You know, and I remember the first I remember 
the first IWC show I dropped into, the first RWA, the first uh, you know other promotions. You know, dropping into Chikara. I, I I don't follow Chikara tightly at all. But right. we have, we go between King of Trios or going up to Cleveland with you that one time. You can drop in and kind of know what's going on, you know. Or, but there are the podcasts so you can kind of get an idea. And I also wonder with IWC, they do a great thing with their Aftershock show. Justin Plummer does a fantastic job with that thing. Great, great production for as little he, as he has to do it, you know. And being so green on the, on the video production side of things, he's pulled together a really cool show there. Um, but I, and, I also... And- and yeah. I think it's very difficult for, I don't know if necessarily if this is just independence, it could be WWE and TNA as well, but you have to make sure you, you're, you, I don't, I hate this. I can't think of a better phrase of this, but cause I hate companies that treat their audiences like they're stupid, mm-hmm. but sometimes you have to treat your audience like they're somewhat stupid in the sense of you have to, in the, in the sense of storytelling. You have to explain every aspect. You have to, like you said, go, to go into a show for the first time, and if you don't know the, what these complicated stories are, and if you know, you have you can't assume that everybody in that audience knows every plot point to every story. You you can do, but you have to do everything in your power to make sure that they do. Yeah, whether it yeah. is, you know, doing the the. Uh, after show pod uh, uh you know whatever sort of stuff you know that's a big job for me when i do commentaries i got i i learned this not too long ago is that i have to explain a lot of the story stuff because some people may be picking up the dvd and they have no clue what you know what the story is mm-hmm. i have to establish that um and i have to do that every single time you yeah because yeah. not just regulars that are watching well, there's a there's a there's kind of a, a you know probably a, a good way to word that uh, in comic books. Uh, mm-hmm. It always bugs me because I read like comic book and I read them in trade paperbacks, and it's just like ah, oh, it's really okay. I can skip all these first like five bubbles about when they explain I'm an X Men and I'm a mutant and people yeah. hate me. You know, is every issue you know? But the but those are important. But the Marvel sense. Creed is this could be somebody's first book. This could be somebody's first comic book. Somebody out there has picked up this book and have no idea what an X-Man is, no idea what a Spider-Man is, don't know an idea what Batman is, as, as crazy as that sounds. But there is somebody. There's a kid that this is their first book, right? And you right. have to talk to that person first, get them up to speed as well as you can, and, and get into it. And again, as an announcer, I think that is that is really good. Um, I mean, and especially on the indies, it's very difficult because if, um, you know, random person X comes into IWC, Joe Nebraska's talking about, this guy has done this with Cleveland. He's been part of Ring of Honor. He's been this, you know, because like I have no idea who Matt Taven is. You know, I know he's a guy that's been on Ring of Honor. He's come in and had some great matches. He's been a, a great part of the roster uh, popping in IWC, uh, I think three times this year, right? Um, but every time he's in, uh, Joe lets me know why this guy's important. This guy's been a TV champion for the longest time. He's done all mm-hmm. this. You know, you get the lit laundry list. They're like, you know, especially the way indies are booked, where it is a lot of people kind of popping in and out, you know, especially yeah. something like a super indie tournament, right? Because it is a lot of invited outside people, right? You know, uh-huh. who's this? Who's this Santa Guevara kid that, you know, everybody's going nuts for, you know? Uh, he gets a story out of that. Um, or well, I think if, or, if they even. It's it's even beyond just uh, I you definitely see a lot of people going to their first indie show yeah or their first show for a company but it, it happens with people that have been going to shows I'll 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 read stuff about you know inspired shows where they they a fan will talk about a certain plot point and and think that certain you know they're you know when they're they're predicting a certain something's happening it's like well no I I explained this that it's going this way I don't know why people are so confused on it but it's it's just a matter of you know, it's it's difficult. It's also it's you know, interpretation you to, too. Because you can't assume that everybody watches every exactly. video online. Exactly. Everyone reads every article. Exactly. You know? So it's it's difficult. So you kind of need thing. to sum up everything that's happened in the last month between your videos, your articles, your Facebook, da 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 da. It still needs to be like the introductory paragraph when that bell rings. Right. right? Exactly. I mean that that there's so much like uh, another thing I've been following. You know. I've been going. I've been in a lot of matches with Joe Dabrowski, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but uh, the, the, you know that that introduction when he's walking to the ring, 
there's a lot of introductory paragraph there of what this person is, why he's having this match, why he's pissed. Um, yeah. uh, facade is really upset about how things are going, and but uh, I don't know, you know, but th- he's really taking things too far. Da 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 da, and people are disagreeing with him. You know, I mean, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going in. And you're right, it's the storytelling, and it is like, is this issue number one for somebody, or is this everything needs to be a jumping on point? You know, yeah. you go to these big shows and, 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 and we worry about the build, the build, the build, the build, you know, to get people to come to it. And it's like, well, you know, some people maybe just come to the shows in that location and they don't care when they go up to, uh, for instance, Clearfield PA, which is a long way away. It's like two and a half hours from Pittsburgh. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so those people are not buying DVDs or watching the aftershocks or anything Exactly. We pop in there. Oh, who's your champion now? Oh, this is happening. Oh, and they do a good job of saying, next time when we come here, we're gonna have John McChesney take on this guy because he screwed him over this time. Even though it might be six months or longer until they're next, they're, they're next. But they, and they I, do. And that. another thing I think is, I think some people hate it when some. A lot of people complain about it when it comes to independent wrestling shows about like in ring promos and, and, and stuff that on the on the actual show that is a wrestling but some of that's really important because that's the closest way to relay a story mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. somebody because you're doing it directly. Um and, Go ahead. Sorry. But that's the thing. And sometimes I will notice this with my commentary. Like sometimes I'll watch matches back that I've already commentated on and, and I'll notice things uh, that the wrestlers do as like a playoff of a of a story or of a previous thing, and I won't recognize it until then. Yeah. And then I feel so bad that I didn't like bring any bring it up on commentary because if I just recognized it, you know what? You know, I'm sure a couple fans, you know, hmm. didn't recognize it either. You know, but they 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 made the effort to to put that out there. But that's a that's a good where you can kind of throw up like, oh, did you did you notice he's been doing this? You know, kind of thing. As, yeah, as, yeah, as, exactly. as a kind of because of follow up. I mean, I think that's something you can definitely. Uh, play with a little bit too. Um, not to tell you how to do a job, not that I know how to announce. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I take it. I'll, I'm less than, a, or pretty much almost a year and a half mm-hmm. in, so I'll take mm-hmm. advice from anyone. Um, yeah, and, and looking at like RWA, their format, typically, um, they've been straying from this a little bit, uh, but typically it's like, well, we have a match, maybe two, and mm-hmm. then somebody from the main event or somebody from your know, doctor feel bad the promoter himself you know he's a promoter slash you know the the authority figure pretty much you know uh comes out and kind of explains what's happening for the main event you know or right. one of the rest was from the main event or maybe the main event main event had to change so we have to kind of well such and so didn't show up because he's a wuss you know uh to cover up whatever really happened you know <laughs> and, uh, you know hey, it's not always bad i mean it's uh, stuff happens so, you know? yeah shit happens. um and and, and 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 you know his stuff ends up different than the poster a lot you know <laughs> um but but there was a format and, and it was one of those things that always annoyed the crap out of me but of course i'm there every month filming the thing so i'm very invested even more so in everything right. but in the long run it's it's still like this is their show every month this is the point where they get to talk to the fans you know um and th- they have to have that mini promo segment now then i've been to other shows in recent months where why does everybody have to get on the mic before the match <laughs> that's true <laughs> like it was just I, out I, of it, control and it took so long and nobody looked at the camera <laughs> until the drunk guy <laughs> noticed um you know it, it's like i love when the crowd so side note i love when the crowd is yelling at the wrestler to look at the camera that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's always that's always fun. You can, you can sort of tell the the, the differences in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think one of the like when you see like in ring promos or whatever stuff like that, people's immediate response, at least on an indie level, I see a lot is you know shut up, we want to see wrestling. It's like but like maybe listen, and this plot point could really you know. Hey, this gain. is all part of it. You know? Yeah. So um, it's it's you know you got to take you got to take it all in. A wrestling show isn't just the wrestling matches. Yeah. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah, although sometimes it is a good cue that maybe we are talking a little bit too much here. So. Oh yeah, you, I mean, you definitely want, don't want to overdo it. You know? Yes. Exactly. And, and know what points you you, know, you want to you want to address. So, anything going on in indie wrestling this weekend, sir? There is some stuff going on this weekend. Uh, a couple, two, uh, two shows that I do want to bring up that are happening, uh, both uh, on the, the 28th, which I believe is Saturday. Uh, we talked with uh, uh, Bryce mentioned it, that he'll be at uh, Old Wrestling in Norwalk, Ohio, which is the uh, if you've never seen Old Wrestling before, the old timey uh, basic style, you know, 1920s 
revisited. I love this. I um, love this. Yes, it's 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 really spectacular stuff. Uh, they they produce some really really cool stuff, uh, and it's it, it's one of those concepts that's very different, and it's and it's very cool. So uh, that's uh, going to be on the twenty eighth. Um, for more information, I believe you can go to oldwrestling.com. Uh, yes, yes. I'm looking at the site, and, and for our audio listeners that maybe can't see the pictures, maybe I can illustrate some of this in in audio form. Um, some of the uh, Newswire headsets, and I feel like we need to do this in like the uh, old timey voice. Two on three? Those legislators never fight fair. <laughs> Can the blondes find another sibling in time? Extravaganza of wrestling exhibitions. Um, yes. you know, and that's like, like read that voice in your head as you read any of these headlines. Uh, this one, yeah, there, there, there may be a lot of phases too on the show that you recognize, but not yes, in, the, uh, in the way that you would normally recognize them. So. Jock, Jock Samson, I, I recognize visually uh, on this one. Uh, that jo- the Jolly Vale Jeepers put their feats of strength to the test against the hooch powered moonshine and Appalachians. Um, there you go. <laughs> uh, and there's a, a mustache and mask versus mustache and mask. One team will never look the same. I love it. I love it. Uh, the Mason Dixie line will run right through Norwalk as Yankee Land meets Dixieland, a North versus South Battle Royal. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun. Um, and I think these guys are on Smart Mark. They had at least one event up there. Stream or download <laughs> yeah. the extravaganza from Smart Mark instantly. Uh, so that's, that's that's awesome. I you know I kind of want. And we mentioned the the circus. Jeez, uh, I can't remember. Why can't I remember that one? Um, the circus wrestling. Pedro's part of this. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. Well, that's awesome. Cool people. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Matthew Cross, aka Matt Cross, which is, you know, I, I love that, those little touches. Um, so, yeah, definitely go check them out and support them because they produce some really innovative, really, really different stuff. So, definitely go check them out there. Uh, if you are not near the Ohio area that weekend, but you are near Providence, Rhode Island, uh, Beyond Wrestling is doing an event uh, Saturday the 28th back at Fet Music. It is their Making Moves event. Uh, it is uh, a lot of cool stuff on there, the continuation of the the basic, the basic feud that's going on in Beyond Wrestling, which is sort of the Beyond Wrestling guys against the Ring of Honor guys. Uh, it's going uh, One of the big uh, high-profile matches on there is a six-person tag. Uh, JT Dunn, David Starr, the Juicy Product team with Kimberly to take on Adam Cole, Mike Bennett, and Maria Kanellis. So that will be really, really interesting stuff uh, for that one. Uh, there's a lot of really cool people on that card, Beyond Wrestling. Uh, he's constantly producing some really cool stuff. Uh, they, they have a lot of content that you can watch on the YouTube channel, and then they um, are, are growing up there as far as popular uh, independent wrestling companies. I, so. love, I love that. Um, this is interesting. An uh, interesting way to do this. Uh, there's actually one on here for live crowd only, Eddie Edwards versus Silver Ant. Like, mm-hmm. that's yeah. interesting to be like hey you have to be here to see this match i, I, that's... I, I think that i think that's due to uh tna if i'm not mistaken oh probably yeah. probably Cause, yeah it's because of the wolves and, and their yeah problems with so yeah but yeah uh they, they they're doing a lot of really cool stuff there so and they, and they got tons of really great talent um, they're always excavating talent from other promotions and, mm-hmm. and and finding new stars so definitely go uh support them over there I'm seeing a lot of friends of the shows. I'm seeing a lot of a uh, little bit of Chikara, a little bit, of course, of TNA. Like I like said, mm-hmm. Ring of Honor represented here. That's uh, those, they got they got really cool. Some interspecies wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Pinky Sanchez. Yeah. I know he was involved with that when I talked to him at uh, WrestleCon last year. Um, I randomly wanted to look at interspecies wrestling because I think I was making a joke about it with the bunny. Last night, mm. <laughs> and they're still going. They're still going strong. It's, it looks like so. Anyway. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, one of Canadians, uh, can- Canadians, can- Canada's finest. Canadians finest. <laughs> Take it out, See? Canadians finest. So definitely go support them over at lookmanofans dot com. And, and that's all. And that's all the shows I have for this week, sort. That's all I got. I don't think. I don't think there's anything happening in there. You know, actually, there's probably something happening on McKeesport here in the Pittsburgh area. <laughs> uh no there isn't oh wait there's ring of honor holy crap that's ring of honors this we, weekend i'm gonna know, be wheeling. there my friends are gonna be there uh so we'll have a report for that next week um of course uh the big thing is uh matt seidel the former evan Bourne, will be there uh taking on aj styles i think it's gonna be a match for the ages it's gonna be 
Um, I believe it is a it is billed as a TV taping. This is part of the Ring of Honor Reloaded tour. Nice. Um, so whatever that's going to mean. Um, I was looking through stuff here. Uh, also on that, uh, I know uh, Jay Briscoe is taking on the Honor Rumble winner. Uh, they have signed Jay Lethal, Mark Briscoe. No ACH on this yet. Hmm. What's up with that? Adam Cole Mark, against uh, Cedric Alexander. Red Dragon against Jimmy Jacobs and Roderick Strong, for instance. So, um, it, 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 Ring of Honor is always a blast. Uh, so, uh, it's down on we- Wheeling, West Virginia, which is a little bit of a drive, but I think it's going to be worth it for a show uh, yeah, as definitely. packed as this. So, looking forward to that and exposing some new people to live Ring of Honor this weekend. So Absolutely. But um, it's always interesting. Sometimes there's some friends of the show at ringside helping out. So, <laughs> or, or or in in matches actually. Like sometimes they they, they do uh, the darks or I, I was up in here and rumblings about some people popping up maybe in the future of honor show uh, from the area that might be some familiar faces. So uh, I'm always looking forward to that because um, this is a good first step for a lot of guys. Um, oh, ACH is still grounded for missing the last show. That's interesting because he actually is listed on one of the later shows on this tour. Yeah, there was some interesting report uh, stuff. Thanks, was, thanks, Garza, for that from the chat. Yeah, there was interesting report stuff, I believe, from the Wrestling Observer, which I, I actually read the report, and I, as a guy who is, you know, has worked with ACH many times, I don't necessarily believe it. Um, I don't know where the report came from. I know uh, that that I've heard bad stuff. Like, 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 yeah, they're talking like, like, no, he wasn't answering his phone to get another flight and all this, all this stuff. And, and a couple, a couple people uh, like Pierre Abernathy, who was, who is, I believe, still, uh, I know they were at one point ACH's roommates uh, in St. Louis, said no. He was. I talked with him that day. The report also says that like uh, Ray Rowe was in like the same state as him. Or because the report said like Ray Rowe lived in the same state of him, which he de- which isn't true because Ray lives in Texas and AC lives in St. Louis. Um, you know, there was reports that his dad was supposed to pick him up, but his dad lives in Texas, so that what? doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah, there's weird stuff going on with Ring of Honor between that and the Mike Elegant situation in Canada. Mm-hmm. Like, but there's, then I, there's I, something going on. Okay, uh, I'll just say that. I I hate dirt sheet reports sort of stuff especially with indies take it yeah take it with such a grain of salt because before people were reporting about how michael elgin it was because of visa issues which makes sense obviously you know if you can't work in america it's hard to have a champion there and but like the original reports because was that michael elgin went out out in an interview and saying that he would let you know he wanted a career in baseball at one point and like ring of honor was mad about that or something which doesn't make any it which makes million times less sense than he had problems with his work visa you know you know it, it it's i'm not a big fan of dirt sheet internet stuff and yeah I, 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 for you know because we live in an internet world especially with indie wrestling and stuff like that i just a testament to everyone don't believe everything you read on the internet it's take That's everything true. with a grain of salt because you know seriously yeah yeah exactly well on that note guys uh, this has been your Indie Mayhem Show. Thanks a lot, Bryce Bramsberg. Check him out. Uh, the Bryce is right. The Bryce is right on the Twitters, <laughs> of course. And check out ChikaraPro.com for what's going on there. Check, uh, follow the podcast at GoGo just for a little snippets taste. Uh, check out there. They got so much stuff. They got classic matches and stuff with people you know. Like there's stuff on there with Matt Bennett. Uh, there's stuff on there with uh, I saw Claudio's uh, now Cesaro listed on there taking on Mike Quackenbush. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, really cool stuff. It, there's, there's no excuse not to experience it at least in some way free. Um, and so, you know, what's going on and, and you know, when it comes to your area or if you really want to travel, for instance, um, you know, th- it's, it's really good to get into really cool to get into. So, um, and of course, check everything mm-hmm. out with us, wrestling mayhem show. Dot com. You can uh, find the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio in audio and video formats. Uh, you can drop us a line. Uh, like I said, talk to us about Indie Wrestling. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline if you want to get at us that way. You can join us here live, typically, on Tuesday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern Time on in the live.circuitronmedia.com. <laughs> um, and, of course, we do swap with the schedule like today with Bryce. Uh, to accommodate that so it might flip up a little bit but you know we're going to be here i start about four o'clock and go all the way until we're done with this show at, uh, at about midnight or so 
Um, also, please check us out on uh, Twitter's at Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Google Plus, on Facebook, and the great Facebook group where there's a lot of conversation going on. Uh, big thanks to Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com for the intro and outro song for this. And uh, thanks, Eamon, at Eamon2, please, and check out the Inspire Pro Wrestling com for what's going on down there uh, also available on smart mark video as well and some older shows actually online for free uh so mm-hmm. again like Chikara, no excuse not to check them out and what they're doing down there with great stuff um and i'm at sorgatron and uh you please for me for amen for bryce support some indie wrestling never said i was a gangster or thug but i'm an animal for the taste of the poor sick 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 you know how i act now if you got a problem come and see if i'm a back down act wild